Hi, I'm Random Trashy. Welcome to the channel. I've got another Q&A video. I'll try and rattle through these questions as quick as possible because these videos end up tend to be really long. Thank you very much, Warrior, for my mug. Okay, I'm going to belt through these quite quick. Ben Price, if TM were to release a new recoil, what would you want and why? Uh, very difficult question. As you guys know, I'm an absolute fan of the TM Recoil series. My 4160 is an absolute monster. It's just a very incredibly accurate weapon. Um, what would you want and why? Maybe some internal changes. An electronic trigger would be really good. Um, just help with that responsiveness. Maybe a built-in MOSFET or something like that to allow you to um, just get a little bit more punch from those batteries as well as conserving energy. Maybe some other slight internal changes, I don't know what, um, just anything to make it just really snappy, really responsive. Uh, as for platform wise, I'd love to see them do some type of marksman rifle, like a proper DMR style rifle. Um, I guess you could say the SCAR H's uh, or the SCAR L. Um, love the SCAR platform, that is one that I'm definitely thinking about going to as well, just another TM uh, to that add to the collection, so maybe one of those, um, hopefully that's answered your question okay. Uh, moving on from there, someone said that uh, TM should do a 249, yeah they definitely should, that'd be awesome, uh, I know a few guys that run 249, especially on some of the big Milsim events, they're such good for putting down rounds um, and just giving a bit of suppressive fire. Uh, moving on from there, Victoria Trafford, um, best eye pro, especially none that fog up and why. Uh, always have ballistic eye pro, uh, I can't recommend it enough. Make sure that you're not just got airsoft quality eye pro, get proper ballistic stuff, whether it's Oakley, Revision, whether it's Bolle. Um, I use the Bol Fury glasses, they're amazing, they steam up on me maybe two or three times in the past two years. If that, actually it probably one or two times ever. They've been absolutely amazing. Um, as long as you keep your glasses nice and clean, make sure that you give them their anti-fog coating. You know, every other time that you go out, keep them clean, wipe them down with a nice clean cloth, give them a quick spray of that anti-fog coating. I normally leave it for three or four minutes, wipe it around the lenses, and then leave them on the side then, just to it completely evaporates off, and then just give them a light wipe over. That normally stops them from steaming up. But um, from my personal experience, Bolle is probably the best. Uh, moving on from there, Gary Mount, what helmet mount is needed for a Cobra Demon Gen 2 NVG? Um, it's the same as you're going to need to mount an armor sight or spark core. They all run on those little mini 11mm dovetail rails and they look like a very small weaver rail. There are a few mounts out there but if you are looking for one, the 172 mount from armor sight will, um, will enable you to get that. Will enable you to um, yeah, run that. Uh, just jumping back to these questions, going to again run through these quite quickly. Uh, Nick Mather on uh, Facebook said, 30 round mags for Milsim. I have run a few uh, events where they've required you to run 30 round mags. Personally, I'm not a massive fan. Um, probably surprised a few of you by saying that. I just found that you blitz through them very, very quick. For CQB, I think 30 round mags are perfect. It enables you to change magazines a lot. Really good for training. Uh, lots and lots of transitions. Lots and lots of mag changes allows for uh, you to do those repetitions for training. Um, really stickly, I just think you burn through them too quick. You end up spending more time changing magazines than you do engaging and getting into a firefight. Yes, I understand the real steel argument, but these are not real steel weapons. They are not as accurate as a real steel weapon. Anyone that's been in a real tense firefight, if you were shooting at someone, say, 30 metres, more than likely you're going to have to put a few rounds out there to see what the wind's doing, um, if you're hitting any brush, high, low, if you're shooting up or down, um, then the hop-up can drag the BB into a variety of different directions. So normally a round or two just to see where they're floating. You know, Sometimes you will get contact and you'll put that red dot on someone and whack and take them out. But if you're shooting on windy, rainy days in uh, difficult environments and you're snapping that trigger quite hard, then normally it takes a few BBs to get onto target. And, and because of that reason, I think 30 rounds, yeah, you could sometimes graze it. 30 to 80 rounds, perfect for me. Any more than 80 and then uh, per magazine and, and then you start sort of dragging your way into, into other territory that I'm not a fan of. So for me, the uh, magazines on the uh, TM are 30 rounds or they're 80 rounds and I normally put them on 80. Uh, moving on from there, uh, Andy Lambert, have you tried the Sistema PTWM4? 
Yes, I have tried out a Sistema, a few of them actually. Um, my favourite one was uh, Matt Belgroves from Sterling. I had a quick go on his at Catterick years back. Absolute monster, has probably had a fortune spent on it, but um, was a very responsive weapon. At the time, they were going for about two and a half, three thousand pounds for the max kit, and then to get the waterproofed and MOSFET and some other bits done to them. So it was just out price range for me. Am I a fan of them though? Do you know what, I, I, if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm actually not. For the amount of money that you spend, you don't buy that much weapon, in my opinion. Um, TMs for me are absolute benchmark for any weapon now. There is nothing better um, that, for the price that I've put my hands on. There are some new weapon systems coming to the, you know, coming to the scene and these GBLS guns and some gas blowback variants and some other, you know, some high-end... MOSFET, the Avalon series and some others, um, but for me the test bench is, is a TM, um, would I go and get a Sistema over a TM? I don't know, I think I'd have to own one for a while to be able to give you that opinion, but the guys that I do know that run them, good friend of mine Richie, always rely on his feedback and a few others, the Burt brothers and some other guys that I know locally that have run Sistemas have had nothing but problems with them, so because of that, no I'm not a massive fan. Um, if the prices come right down and maybe they were at a grand, then yeah, maybe so. But um, where they are or where they were when I last looked uh, was just too expensive for the, what they deliver. Alvy Morris, another good question. Uh, if you want, if you could travel abroad and play any form of airsoft, where would you choose to go and why? I'd like to go to the US. I've got a lot of US friends, a lot of US fans on this channel um, and followers and stuff. Not really fans, but followers. Um, and I'd like to go out there and play some games with those guys. Jonathan from Airsoftology, I've spoke to him. I'd love to go out and play some games with him. The real limitations of me uh, going out are being able to take my own kit. Um, and also travelling around the US with that kit, I just don't know how it works, I don't know whether I'd want to risk it, and whether I'd want to do maybe um, two or three different events all in one go, or go out there for one event and come back. Um, the US would probably be where I'd want to go, um, but how that would work, I don't know. Just moving on. Uh, Albie Morris, another question. Uh, what do you think of Cloud9 selling out to Manic Paintball? Will it affect the service provided? Um, I did actually read that earlier and I wasn't going to cover it, but um, I think it's fair that I do. Obviously, I've been involved with Cloud9 uh, for a few years and I've worked quite closely with their team. I had an inkling that things were going to be going this way December last year. Um, I got a real big care package from them in January. Um, it was either going to go one of two ways then, that was kind of a parting gift, um, or it was going to be that they were going to reignite. Down to Brexit, some other issues around um, cost and how much profit they make and all that lot um, just made it unfeasible for them. The issue for me being then sponsored by a uh, paintball company, as it were, doesn't really work from a promotional perspective, um, obviously they're called Manic Paintball, does that mean that they're going to do airsoft stuff as well? I don't know. Uh, at the moment, with Cloud9, the Cloud9 team, and any promotion from myself towards Cloud9, it's cut, uh, and will kind of be dependent on further conversations, but I'm gutted by it, um, you know, Enola Gay have really dominated the market, I don't normally speak about them all that much, I don't find the way that they promote their stuff and some of the things that they've used to promote their their products in line with what I see right. You know, these half-naked girls throwing smokes around or people using them out on the streets and that sort of thing. It's just not really... It doesn't focus on airsoft and because of that it's, it's kind of a negative for me. Also, the people that they sponsor and, and some of the seems to be so easy to be picked up by Enola Gay if you've got a slight following they seem to throw a load of products at you and then on the flip side I've got some friends that were sponsored by Enola Gay and they didn't get treated by them very well so I'm not a massive fan um, I kind of liked the Cloud9 underdog scenario of, of trying to break the market and being a bit of a rebel company but um, yeah I don't know I don't really know the business that well so I'm a bit gutted by it it's a shame but we'll see how things go in the future it's early days uh, Oscar Engstrom, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, what's your opinion on the new DAS limited edition M4A1 rifle from GBLS and what do you think of the system it is using? I think it's a very, very clever system. Um, seems to work well. 
my issue uh, with the whole system and the way that they've approached the market is that they seem to have sent the gun to people that aren't really milsim orientated. Um, I've never seen one of them tested. I've never seen one of them hard skirmished or hard uh, milsimmed. They seem to have had the typical desk overview that I've given to stuff previously. But I haven't seen one being shot, being punished. Um, and I had don't know that many people that have them due to them being limited edition and all that lot so I love the system I like the look of them they could probably be a phenomenal gun they are expensive I think two and a half thousand dollars um, so they're definitely not cheap but uh, they do look like a very interesting system so I have asked GBLS to send me one I'll torture test it take it out on a 48 hour event but um, they haven't got back to me as yet so I'm looking forward to hearing back from those guys or, or seeing someone out there actually run one through its paces and, and give it a bit of a beating rather than these glossy desk overviews. Uh, moving on. Next question is from Michael Marden, my predator friend, how are you? Uh, hi mate, 416 Delta, any benefits versus the 416D dev crew? Uh, the only difference is, is the accessories that it comes with. Uh, obviously, the 416 Dev comes with uh, the um, rail-mounted grip, and it also comes with the suppressor and that as well. I think it comes with a slightly different stock. For me, it just seemed like it come with the suppressor and, and um, the, the, but the, the mono grip at the front, which I was quite interested in getting anyway, and I run that for a little while uh, before I changed it out recently. So um, it just come with a few accessories. Other than that, no difference from what I know. Uh, someone might pipe in there with some different trademarks or something, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just gonna have some trouble, trouble pronouncing this name, so I do apologies. Tiag Alfonso Brooks, uh, hopefully that's pronounced right. It might be Tiag. Um, it said, are you sticking around for the whole uh, of the next apocalypse milsim rather than being around for just the dark bits? Yeah, um, I'd made my way back from Scotland on Friday, so I couldn't be there Friday night, and uh, I got back Friday evening. Um, so there was no way that I was going to be getting in, getting some sleep, seeing my, my wife and my little boy, and then um, and then leaving 6 o'clock the following morning to go and, and be there for the Saturday daytime. It just wasn't feasible. Um, I got in, got my stuff together, went and met the boys. We got to the site about 7 p.m. and we played through to about three o'clock, two, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, at APOC. At that point, everyone was either bedded down or they'd been hammered. So it was a bit of a shame. I wanted to play all the way through until the early hours of Sunday, um, and then when it flips back to sort of skirmishy, um, I would have left. I am going to try and be at the next one for the full thing, um, but with my work commitments at the moment. It's looking like I might be there for Saturday afternoon from about 2, 3 o'clock through until early hours of Sunday morning again and then be coming home because I'll have a flight Sunday night. So, uh, Tyag, I will try and be there for more of it, but worst comes to the worst, I'll be there for the green-eyed stuff. Adriano, how's it going, brother? Um, it says, Adriano Conte, uh, what is your favourite gear set up, clothing and, white, clothing and gear? Uh, it changes quite a bit. For trousers, jackets, uh, underwear, um, you know, undergarments, anything like that. Claw gear for me is just banging, absolutely phenomenal kit. I've been running it for years now. Uh, since I first started speaking to those guys, I've got a jacket that they sent me. I still wear it pretty much every day or every other day. Um, it's a phenomenal amount of kit. Warrior for me is still top dog. It will take a hell of a lot of beating to, to strip me of the Warrior stuff. Great price sturdy as anything my recon is still absolutely immaculate i'm just looking at it down on the floor in front of me i was training in it earlier today just doing some transitions and pistol truck work and that sort of thing um, and it's just absolutely perfect I, I seriously couldn't see myself swapping it out for anything even if cry came along or, or any of these larger more expensive brands it would take a hell of a lot to strip me out of that so if i'm rocking claw gear and i'm in some warrior tactical stuff i'm happy as anything and that really does you know, show justice. Uh, their stuff's awesome. I've been using it for years and it, it really is still perfect. Uh, Reese, why won't Adriano sponsor Ben and I? Um, probably down to lack of talent. Um, that's what I would say. You, you know, you, you boys need to step it up a bit. I'm joking, Reese and Ben, um, absolutely wicked. Two guys from Wigs Push Back absolutely destroyed some people the other weekend at the barracks. Them two guys, uh, transition wise, skill, CQB, having the balls to just steam into a room full of people and take them out. Uh, Reese and Ben absolutely tore it. They made me feel very, very old. Uh, moving on. 
Darren Martin, uh, non-related. When am I up north? When am I going up north next? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's a tactical company I want to go and see in the next couple of weeks uh, in Peterborough, and then maybe up to see the CAG guys at some point later in the year. I really don't know. It depends. Um, just on how other stuff works out. I'm going to Scotland in a few weeks for a video shoot, and yeah, I've got a hell of a lot on. So um, Darren, I will drop you a message if I'm coming up north. Moving on to Instagram, sorry that I know this video is uh, kicking on a little bit um, I will try and rip through these questions as quick as possible. So now over to Instagram questions, a Bulbasaur always drops me a question, uh, go and hit up his channel. Uh, what's your opinion on the changes to the airsoft power limit laws that are being introduced into the UK? Uh, if you're not aware of this, the power limit changes um, uh, are taking force in May of this year um, and it's just bringing down the FPS and the dual limits a little bit and having them more set in stone. For me, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Um, the, the, if I was running a factory gun like I was before, like the Ares or the GMP that come into the country quite hot at 400 FPS, I would be concerned. Because I'm running the TM that's 290 FPS, I have no problems with it at all. The Mancraft kit that's in my sniper is fully adjustable and the pistol um, itself as well is under the power regulation limit. So I'm more than happy with the weapons that I have. Does it affect everyone else? I think the retailers really need to make sure that if they are importing weapons and they are making changes to them in the factory or in their warehouse, in their shops, they are changing guns from standard that you allow the customer to know that you have personally made changes to it. And it hasn't come from the factory like that. That is my one concern with all retailers in the UK. If you are modifying guns from factory to any other specification, then you need to let the customers know. Harsh, true. Bradley Harmon, if you could use any M4 base gun other than an AR, what would you use? I do like the scars that run on the M4 mags, uh, so the CQR, L, something like that. Uh, I do love that, it's a beautiful looking gun, um, it's on the shopping list. Camo raids are already have my order in for it, I just need to uh, pluck up the courage to just buy it and get it. Moving on, Airsoft Vixen, how are you? I'm a massive follower of yours. Um, what do you do? What? Do you look for in an airsoft site that makes it great? For example, do you like storylines playing more with more military-minded scenarios? Uh, what do I like in a site? Uh, I like honest owners. Um, the storyline really it doesn't matter too much for me. A good, clean environment. Someone that cares about their site. Someone that cares about the gameplay and the people that turn up. Um, nice, safe zones that work and that are... Uh, policed to make sure that people are being as safe as possible with their airsoft weapons. I've seen some safe zones where there's guys walking around with guns on their shoulders, magazines in them, finger on the trigger. Um, yeah, I, for me, a site has to make sure that they have a good, clean, outlined safe zone. That you know they're working the safe zone. They make sure that people are conscious of what they're doing with their weapons. Making sure the day flows well. For a skirmish site, you know, Apocalypse, the guys up there run it really well. Uh, it's a great, it's a huge site. They're always working up there. It's always changing, always being modified. Um, and the guys that run it are really friendly. So friendly staff that police their site well. Um, good, clear, clean games. Um, and, and making sure that they have the right people there and not people turning up there uh, aggressive, bad, tempered and, and there for the wrong reasons of airsoft really. Uh, moving on from there, uh, One Legion UK Stretch, how's it going dude? Um, what piece of kit do you want more than anything but haven't got your hands on yet? Uh, I really want some 4G night vision, just go and check it out, look at the 4G videos on Instagram, they are insane, it's pretty much like full colour night vision, it's just nuts, I want it, I'd literally give my liver for it. Um, which would mean I'd have to give up gin, which would suck. Airsoft Review Argentina, would you consider any other gun platforms than M4? Yes, been asked to me before, I would, I'd go to the SCAR platform, absolutely love it. Um, Magnus the Just, what YouTube video, movie or video game weapon would you like to see an Airsoft replica of? Uh, I'm not really into that. If it's not real steel, then um, I I'm not really that interested. I'm not into all this like cartoon alien weapon thing. So um, just the real steel stuff for me, please. Moving on. Um, CJT223. Favourite company or brand that is Airsoft Real Steel. Uh, overall, probably Warrior Assault Systems. 
real steel company that deals in the, a lot in the airsoft market. Um, their products are good, they're well priced, they're extremely well made and I'm a massive fan of them. Massive, massive fan. Um, moving on from there, Kicking Mustang, what's up brother? Um, absolutely love Kicking Mustang. Guys, if you don't follow him, go and follow his Instagram. He's always on there, really active. One hell of a sniper and the most sneakiest bastard out of all of my friends. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way, James. Uh, right. To what extent are your loadouts chosen for their practicality over impression? For example, if a piece of kit adds to a look but reduces effectiveness, do you use it? Uh, my kit is stripped out to be as effective as possible. I don't really copy any loadouts. Um, I like the 416 um, because it's a nice, tight CQB based weapon. At the same time, uh, I can use it out on the ground anywhere, but it's got that CQB length where I can manipulate it in buildings and stuff like that. My plate carrier is as slick as possible. I don't like anything like flaps uh, or underneath my arms, so I, I've got the recon. It's got very minimal side bracing, and I run a very few accessories on it. All my mags are on the front. It keeps me in a very streamlined profile. As for trousers, jackets, tops, anything like that, anything that fits me snugly, um, as most of you guys know, uh, I've got quite a small frame, so uh, anything that's going to fit me nice and tight, I don't like baggy clothing, I don't like bits and bobs hanging off of me, I like everything tucked in, taped in, and uh, and, and nice and snug, so it just makes me as, as effective as possible out on the ground. Um, Last question, what is your favourite rifle you have owned? It is my TM416D Dev Crew from Camo Raids. Uh, Camo Raids, great retailer and the cheapest TM retailer that I could find. Um, Freddie Ince, last question, sorry. Um, what do you think of impression loadouts, especially for a Milsing mil game? Also, would you ever attempt one? I've been asked this a lot. Um, yes, I love the JWK as an impression. Um, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, again, I, my... my Equipment is all laid out to be as slick, as neat and as compact as possible as well as being practical. I'm all about practicality um, and knowing where things are and being able to operate or um, be as effective on the ground as possible. Guys, this is a super long video. Thank you very much for watching. I've hopefully I've answered all of your questions. If you do have any more questions, whack them in the box below. A sub, bottom right. Uh, more videos, top right. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon.